Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode one of the Edison Encyclopedia, my first foray into the Edison content in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Yugi tubing sphere, and I'm super excited. I've been planning something like this for a while, and this is just the beginning, because I've got some larger Edison plans in store, but we'll get to those when we get there. For now, though, we have the one and only, the man himself, Fraser Smith, here <laughs> to discuss uh, probably one of the most quintessential decks in the format, Black Wings. Fraser, how you doing? I am doing well. How are you, Simo? I am fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your incredible insight and knowledge with all of the players who are looking to get more familiar with Edison. And uh, we're going to start with a deck, maybe not the deck that you're most known for playing, but one of your uh, second favorites, I should yes, say. Yes, it's definitely my second favorite for sure. So how do you feel about Black Wings overall? Uh, well, if you watch my channel at all, by the way, I'm from the I'm There podcast. I'm a host on that. And uh, I also have my co-host, Kenny, who does it with me as well. Um, we have our YouTube channel and everything. So just get that out the way. Uh, a lot of you I'll have that down know, in the description. Yes. Yep. Uh, yeah. A lot of people <laughs> you might know me from playing Yu-Gi-Oh! competitively. Uh, back in the day, I won a YCS with Gravekeepers in 2010. Uh, and then, you know, I was on ARG at one point and did a lot of uh, just traveling the world, playing the game, going to YCSs, nationals and all that stuff. And then I formally retired in early 2017 i want to say uh when zoo was really popular and links were coming out so i've never actually link summoned uh so i got out the game right before then but uh in terms of my return to the game i've been playing edison for the last two years i want to say now like around that time uh, i got into it because of e3 Yu -Gi Oh's channel just hosting tournaments rbets and stuff and one of the absolute best decks if you know me you know that i always say i think black wings is the best deck in edison format even though edison format is a format where you can play there's over 25 competitive decks like actually and you could technically play any one of them but i do think that black wings is at the top of the food chain mainly because it's really easy to play the deck uh, even at, you know, the ceiling for the deck is actually high, but the floor of it is not so much. So you can you can kind of get in really easily on Black Wings and do well with it. And it has some very, very powerful cards. So it plays like, as you can see, Dark Arm Dragon, Black Whirlwind, things like that. So we can start wherever you want, Simo. I'm down to dive in wherever. Absolutely. Yeah, this is probably the deck that a lot of people, like if there is a face of Edison, if it's not like Caius, it's probably a Black Wing monster in some capacity. Uh, yeah. Black Wings is probably one of the actual only archetypes like fully like everything in the deck is named a black wing card that exists in edison and that's sort of when Yu-Gi-Oh was in this transition period of forming into like sort of this archetype based card game but that's obviously a discussion for another video so for anyone who's watching this and is a uh, familiar or is a uh, new to all of this uh what we're going to be doing is the video is going to be broken up into two parts we're going to be starting by deep diving into black wing specifically and a lot of the individual cards and why you want to play these cards and why you might see them at certain ratios and the second part of the video, if you don't care about any of that, we actually want to do, uh, and we have, we want to take advantage of having Frazier here and share <laughs> his insights from someone who has as many accolades as him, who uh, not even just outside of Edison, but within Edison itself, considering he's topped uh, many of the Ultimate Time Wizard events thus far and many of the online tournaments as well. We want to see a deck like this played at the caliber at his level, and so uh, that's what we're going to do. So let's start off with the deck itself, and I think I already have Shura Hubbard over here. I think Shura is sort of like what a lot of Edison is like centralized around because for instance cards that we're not showing here such as Rescue Hamster and such have 1800 defense. Yep. Shura is like a card just like the stats of it is what we're trying to like every other deck is focusing on and so uh, why don't we start with Shura? Yeah so Shura is actually insane. I think that uh, a lot of people don't realize that when Shura gets his effect off it's really a plus two because in Yu-Gi-Oh! in general, beating a monster in battle is considered a plus one, right? You go plus one to card advantage. Your opponent lost a card and you just still have whatever beat it in battle. Then Shora summons another monster from your deck, which is another plus one. So at that point, if Shora beats over your monster, right? You you kill their monster, it goes to grave, and then you also get a value usually. Uh, and at that point, at that moment, you are officially plus two. And that is extremely ridiculous in Edison format because pluses are kind of hard to come by. Um, yes. So Shora also has the backing of Kalut, 
which is another Blackwing monster that gives him 1400 attack. So when you pair Shora with that monster specifically, it can be really hard. In fact, when I first started playing, I realized that there's nothing in the format that beats a Shora backed by Kalut. There is no monster that is regularly summoned that has 3300 attack power because he becomes 3200. Uh, so he beats basically every monster that's played in a format normally. Him being 1800 and a four star also combos well with uh, Blizzard the Far North to make level six synchros, which are really important. And we'll talk about that later as well. Um, him being a wing beast is for is good for obviously Icarus attack and they're all wing beast dark a lord darkness uh and then just the fact that most of the monsters in edison are i call them shore of food so like the other good decks play a <laughs> bunch of puny monsters like zombies they play pyramid turtle and goblin zombie and then you have decks that play like dandelion which is a very common card that you see in the format um in fact the format's kind of named after or like the tournament was won the sjc was won by quick draw so a lot of people know dandelion when they think about edison format but that this monster if you ever have it on the field it's shore of food so a lot of cards, I just consider him to be food for this guy. And he's so polarizing because of that. He's a better version of Flamvel Fire Dog because the things that he can summon are insane. So Vayu is like the tip of the iceberg. But then you have other things like uh, Gale the Whirlwind, which is at one in Edison format. And this card is a tuner. Um, it's a three star, which goes right into Armor Master off of one short attack. So that is really, really, really good. Uh, Armor Master is one of the best synchro monsters in the format. And then Gale being a three star tuner gives you immediate access to it. Gale also has a secondary effect to half monsters and you could use priority in Edison format, which means that the second you summon a monster, you're allowed to just activate the effect of something like Gale the Whirlwind. So you could half their monster with priority, no matter what happens to your Gale, if they book a moon it or do something to it to remove it from the field, it will still go through and the monster's effect will be, or their attack and defense will be half. Shora gets Gale. It gets Kalut, which is usually something you don't see often. People typically keep their Kalutes. The only reason you would typically get a Kalut from your deck is when you're going for damage, like if the extra 100 matters, uh, or if you have some other specific reason. But typically when you get a, a Shora effect resolution, you want to go for Vayu because Vayu does something in the graveyard. And to add to this, Vayu is a one-star tuner. And I know that it reads that you can't use it as a uh, synchro material. However, Shora happens to negate the effect of the monster that he summons, which means that Vayu's effect where it cannot be used as a tuner is also negated, allowing you to make a five star synchro immediately so you can go into magical android or you can go into cataster and these are two of the best five star synchros in edison format the main reason why i think that the blackwing deck is extremely good is because of cards like shore but overall the overall thing that i want everyone to understand about black wings is that it is very aggressive and unlike every other deck i don't feel like any other deck does it as well it can just take your life points to zero so fast that you're wondering like the game just started some some games just start and they can go normal summon Sirocco, which is the five star monster uh, and then special summon bora the sphere now these two guys are insane as a combo they're also good individually and we could talk about them now so Sirocco is a five star blackwing uh he is a normal summon if your opponent controls a monster right so the fact that you can just do that if they control a monster and you don't is kind of reminiscent of cyber dragon except it's not a special summon but a 2000 normal summon monster in edison format is pretty insane and then he has all the good things about him too like every other monster so he's dark uh wing beast etc but this guy's a non-tuner he pairs really well with gale to make a star synchros and then he has effect where you can activate it to make any one black wing on the field gain the total attack of all black wings on the field that means your opponent's black wing monsters and your black wing monsters that being said if you're in a, if you're playing in a black wing mirror match which is very common it's actually the most common deck in every tournament if you summon Sirocco and your opponent has a field of black wings you can make your Sirocco gain all of their attacks and then attack over their guy usually this is a game shot because of so much damage uh but this is what makes Sirocco crazy now bora on the other hand some people do not like bora because he almost reads as the most basic of all the black wing monsters he just pierces piercing meaning that if he attacks a defense mode monster he will inflict damage regardless of the fact that the monster is in defense mode. So when you pair Sirocco and Bora together, you can activate Sirocco's effect to pump your Bora, making it 3,700 attack and attack face down. And you know what the most common face down monster is? Raiko. Raiko is Edison's most commonly set monster and it happens to have a defense of 100. So when you do this very basic Blackwing play of Sirocco plus uh, Bora, you do 3,600 damage, and this could be as early as turn one. That's almost half their life points gone in literally 
one turn and it could be the first turn it happens very commonly because again Raikou is the most common set monster overall some of the uh main ones and then you have what i consider to be the reason why black wings is and i'm going to use air quotes here the best deck in the format blizzard is absolutely unhinged it is a two-star tuner <laughs> And when you normal summon it, uh, you can bring back a black wing that is level four or lower from your graveyard and summon it in defense mode. And for some strange reason, that monster's effect is not negated. And this is relevant because <laughs> of Gale. Remember we talked about Gale. Gale allows you to half a monster's attack, a, a, a monster's attack and defense, actually, which is really relevant. You can bring back Gale with Blizzard and use priority to half your opponent's monster's attack and defense. And they're two tuners, so you can't do anything with them in terms of like synchroing, but you could just use the Gale in defense mode for an Icarus attack, or you could use it with another, if you have another monster in the field that's a non-tuner, like a Bora or something, and Bora can be special summoned, which is awesome. So you can pair it with that as well. Um, there's a bunch of damage that can be done with just blizzard and boras and colutes the deck just kind of like flows so well together and going back to what you said earlier simo about archetypes this is when konami was definitely switching into the whole archetype thing you're getting these decks that are really cohesive as opposed to so many other decks in edison form and i feel like they do work well together but they're not designed that way on purpose right like they right. were not initially with that thought in mind where well, you can tell the black wings actually are designed to work together so blizzard when you have a bora or shora in the graveyard this is one of the first things that the black wing player wants to establish by any means necessary the black wing player wants to establish a level four monster in the graveyard at some point and the best way to do that is by Icarus attack but you're fine with it going to the graveyard any other way because once you have a level four monster in the graveyard this gives your blizzard instant access to goyo guardian which is literally the strongest level six synchro in the format by stats there is no other level six synchro in the format that has 2800 attack so this guy is one card with blizzard if you have a level four in the grave and then the best synchro in the entire format brionic the dragon of the ice barrier so this guy is absolutely insane as well um, and blizzard becomes a one card both of those synchros both of those synchros are just one card and no other deck can really make those cards this easy outside of black wings so that's one of the reasons why this is what i consider to be the best deck in the format it just has a lot of uh very synergistic and unfair cards and you get to play if you notice three of all of them <laughs> like all, all the cards are basically at three there's very few limited cards the only cards that are limited are a dark arm dragon which is not a black wing and this guy would need to be limited otherwise the format would be completely warped and then gale the <laughs> whirlwind is limited to one because prior to edison format we had some dark strike fighter stuff that we will not get into right now everything else is at three which means that your deck is consistent and so all the that's all the monsters do you want to go into the <laughs> the most unhinged of all the, the spells yeah i think before we get into the unhinged spells i think the other point that I wanted to make as well is that this deck also just attacks is aside from it being as aggressive as it is it also attacks the opponent from so many different angles that a lot of other decks sometimes just aren't equipped to deal with right I mean the fact that Kalut you have the hand disruption you have the Icarus attacks affecting you that way right there's just so many different things that as someone who's playing against a Blackwing deck that you have to take into account do they have a possible value setup like is there going to be a Gale coming out of the hand mm -hmm. like how many special summons are going to be coming down from in addition to if their normal summon sticks, right? There's just so many things that if you don't just essentially just brace yourselves, like the dam will break and then it's just game over from that position. And yeah. I think I just love that a deck like this uh, just has so much aggression and it being one of the best decks of the format, I think that's awesome. But what this is what we're all here for. This yes. is the card we're all here for. <laughs> yes. So Black Whirlwind <laughs> turns the deck into the actual definition of the best deck. So I think without yes. Black Whirlwind, it is definitely on the same power level as some of the other powerful decks in the format. But I think that this card specifically, which is at two, and in Edison format, you do draw to six on turn one. So if you go first, you win a die roll or whatever you win rock paper scissors you do draw six you have around a 28 percent chance to open with black whirlwind now this card says that when you normal summon a black wing monster you are allowed to search your deck for a monster with attack that is less than the monster that you summon so if you summon shora you can search for kalut or bora or blizzard or gale or vayu if you summon soroko you can search anything so that's yep. kind of like a roundabout way of explaining what Whirlwind does. And it sounds like a very, you know, decent effect. Like, oh, that's what reinforcement of the army kind of does, except it's continuous for some reason. So <laughs> every single turn you summon a normal Blackwing monster, it just immediately will search your deck for another guy. And what this does is it turns it into the world's most powerful gadget deck ever. This card gives you plus ones immediately. So when you win a die roll and it goes unopposed, you end your turn with seven cards minimum now. You start with six, this card will search one. And then if your opponent doesn't deal with it immediately, you'll probably end up having an additional plus one on the following turn. And games become trivialized because of this card. So 
yeah. one of the things that Simo mentioned is just like how this deck can rush you down and it's very aggressive. It's interesting that Black Wings is one of the only decks in a format that can summon multiple monsters in one turn. Most decks in Edison, they don't summon as many monsters so fast. Like this deck can literally, it's one of the only decks that can like go from zero monsters on the field to actually like three or four out of nowhere. And that's not a very common thing in such a slower format. So um, yep. Black Whirlwind actually enables that because if you summon something like, let's say you summon Soroko with Whirlwind, you can search your deck for Bora. And we already talked about how those two cards combo together for, to make a huge piercing monster. But well, one of the most common plays that happens is people will activate Whirlwind, summon Soroko, search out something like Bora or Gale, whichever one you're missing, and you special summon both of them. Then you pump the Bora to make him 5,000 attack power, 2,000 plus 1,700 plus 1,300, you have a 5,000 attack power of Bora. And then you can also have your opponent's monsters attack and defense with Gale's effect to make them even lower. And then you can synchro the Soroko and the Gale to make Stardust for protection. And then the 5,000 attack, uh, <laughs> 5, attack Bora will then go over their monster that's been halved with protection from Stardust. It's absolutely insane. It's so much damage. And it's also, crazily enough, one of the most common plays this deck actually does. So yeah, this deck has some of the biggest swings in not only card advantage, but also just damage output. It is probably the highest damage output next to, there's one other deck that is very similar to this. It actually plays a lot of the same cards called Value Turbo, but these two decks are what I would consider the most aggressive and they happen to be two of the best decks in the format. Um, but this one does play Black Whirlwind, which is, in my opinion, one of the top 10 cards in the format. I think that the whole format would be very different if this card was either limited to one or just straight up banned. You did mention how Black Whirlwind can trivialize a lot of games, but I would argue that simultaneously, Black Whirlwind is one of the most skillful cards to use in the deck because I think you definitely see a skill differential between newer players and expert players in how they use Black Whirlwind from when they activate it to what they search off of the Whirlwind. Do you want to go into a bit of insight on that? Yeah, so I think that knowing what to get from your deck is really important. Typically, turn one, like if I have Whirlwind and Shora, I want to get Kalut just to back him up. It doesn't matter that your opponent knows. The reality is I've played this format a while now. You realize it's nothing that they can really do about it anyway. Like, yeah, you know that I have a Kalut to back my guy now, but most decks can't do anything about it like they can't there's nothing outside of playing like weird spot removal cards which aren't really that common um you might just have to hold an l because shora is 3200 technically like he's backed by this monster also if you already have a clue you can search a blizzard for follow-up so knowing when to do that type of thing like oh, okay i already have the clue i can just search a blizzard just in case something does happen to my shora i'll be able to bring it back and go into one of those broken level six synchros immediately same thing with knowing when you want to go into something like armor master so if you have a bora and and typically opening up Bora with Whirlwind is, is one of the, it's still a strong opening, but it's not the ideal one. The ideal one is uh, Whirlwind Shora. Everyone complains sure. about it. Um, but Whirlwind Bora is also fine because you can go into Armor Master and that guy is really, really good in the mirror match. So again, Blackwing mirror match is very common. If you're going to play this deck, you have to be prepared for that. Uh, and Armor Master is kind of hard to deal with in a mirror match once it's been established. So Bora, when you summon it, you can search out Gale, Special Gale, Synchro, and make those two immediately. Uh, and this also helps knowing when to search Gale because you give yourself the ability to do things like turn one deck devastation virus which is a side deck card but a very important card in this deck as well and then another cool thing about whirlwind and i think that this is this is like where it really gets tricky so you can chain block with black whirlwind and blizzard the far north and this is mm -hmm. not a common thing that happens in edison format i know it's way more common in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, but in edison format you actually can't structure your chains too much a lot of the times um but with this you can so if you summon blizzard and you activate the effect right chain like one blizzard and you target short and your graveyard to special summon it so chain like one is blizzard uh and then chain like two you can make whirlwind this stops a couple of key cards in edison format one of them being royal oppression which this deck actually plays itself so you can get around your own oppression and you can get around your opponent's royal oppression because even though blizzard is using its effect to special summon a monster from the grave normally you could pay 100 to negate it with royal oppression because whirlwind is coming directly after blizzard's effect before the opponent can respond oppression actually cannot be used because it has to code directly after so you can chain block that way to dodge oppression but it also dodges herald of orange light which is another card that if you know anything about modern Yu Gi Oh, was played in terror elements for a while and played in other decks in modern Yu Gi Oh. Uh, but herald of orange light is also a pretty important card in edison format and and 
whirlwind allows you to block these things from uh, happening to you which is really really big because sometimes just getting to the point where you get your monster in the field now enables you to go oh i have an icarus attack so blizzard brought back a guy which is free now for my icarus attack and that's a plus one right if you get that yep. off your icarus attack doesn't have a real cost at that point so these these things knowing when to chain block with it is really good you can also do the inverse you can actually choose to make whirlwind chain link one and blizzard chain link two if you wanted to do it that way because you're not trying to play around oppression or herald you just want your monster to guarantee stick to the field so there's like reasons to do either one of them um, and that's a, i think that's also a really cool thing that you can do as a player when you have this card you do need to have a value in your deck in order to do the play that i just said so blizzard can only search in this in a typical black wing deck it can only search value the emblem of honor you notice this build is playing two that's for good reason one because shora typically wants to get value and blizzard with whirlwind typically wants to get value so that's like one of the reasons why playing two value is actually really good um there's always debates about how to say this card's name i say value as you can hear but some people say value they're interchangeable uh not exactly sure what the right one is but <laughs> but yeah this guy is important for many reasons and uh yeah whirlwind is is definitely one of them um in terms of the other key spell cards a lord darkness is every dark deck in edison format is going to play this card it allows you to draw two and then you can banish anything in your hand so also with whirlwind when you have a lore in your hand you'll want to search something like value and emblem of honor because it's kind of a throwaway card when you just want to banish something without touching the rest of your hand if you have other good cards if you already have a collude or a blizzard or whatever you can use your whirlwind to search value from your deck and then play a lore that way now you don't have to banish something like a sirocco or a gale or a blizzard you can actually just banish this guy and you do play two of it anyway so it's kind of just like your throwaway to allure uh allure also helps you to dig for the ever important icarus attack and things like that and then as that plays, and black whirlwind yes and black whirlwind if you don't have the <laughs> whirlwind already allure will bring you closer to it which is unhinged but yes luckily for everybody this card is at one uh typically i do wince a little when my black wing opponent sees their allure darkness because it just brings them one step closer to seeing that uh that black whirlwind it goes from 28 percent <laughs> to some number higher than that that i don't have off the top of my head uh but yeah and then we also have book of moon and this card so i used to be against it right even though you could clearly see some of the synergies but i'll explain it so book of moon is played in some black wing lists and i'm at the point now where i i understand why it helps to establish your monster on the field even if it has to go face down so one of the best cards against black wings is bottomless trap hole and that card happens to be a staple basically for most of the decks that are not frogs so bottomless trap hole really really hurts the black wing deck because it prevents a lot of the things that we talked about earlier including blizzard the far north's effect from going off uh and then things like value comboing with sirocco in the graveyard it also stops that whole interaction from happening so bottomless is very good and it also stops black whirlwind all that being said if you have book of moon you can actually use book of moon to put your black wing monster that is trying to be bottomless face down to save it it combos with icarus attack because you can use icarus attack even when you have a face down black wing so icarus attack is a trap card tribute one wing beast monster and then target two cards on the field and destroy both of them even though the monster's face down the game still knows that it's a wing beast monster uh you're allowed to tribute your face down black wing for icarus attack so this interaction is very common again because uh bottomless trap holes played a lot and also other things like battle traps you have d prison and mirror force so if your black wing is attacking into a d prison and you really don't want to get it banished because you want it to go to the graveyard uh you can use book of moon to save it and that's just like the defensive things about book of moon and black wings book of moon can also be used as an offense of card so remember we started with shora and he has an effect that works when he destroys a monster by battle book of moon helps to destroy monsters by battle because almost every monster in edison format has less than uh 1800 defense that's just the way konami made most of these early cards they have very very <laughs> little defense if the card is good typically the defense is low even dark arm dragon only has a thousand defense um so that being said ashura with book of moon pretty much beats anything and another common monster that you will see in the format is Caius the shadow monarch uh, a lot of people play Caius the Shadow Monarch. This is probably the most popular monster in the format. If not this, then Raikou. Um, but yeah, Caius has also a thousand defense. In fact, all monarchs do. So if you have Shora with Book of Moon, you can automatically beat over it. And what's cool about that is sure you go minus one when you play Book of Moon, but then your opponent loses the monster in battle and Shora will activate to give you a value or a gale or a... Um, a clue so you'll get a plus in that regard either way and that's just one of the interactions another thing that you can do with book of moon is bora pierces and so if you have a game shot your opponent might be at like 
2,000 life points and you have Soroko plus uh, Bora to go for a 3,700 piercing or Bora plus Kalut to go for 3,100 piercing, you can book their monster, put it face down, and all of a sudden, a game that your opponent was maybe about to win, you can steal it from them with Book of Moon. Um, this happens all the time. So yeah, Book of Moon does a lot. It also does other things for the deck like breaking up the dupe block, uh, stopping opposing synchros from coming out and things like that. So really, really good card. The rest of them are staples. So another thing about Black Wings, the deck typically doesn't play a lot of spells. When you look at a Black Wing deck, standard lists play between six and seven spells most of the time. Um, this one's playing Double Book of Moon. Some of them play one or whatever, but uh, the other spells that it always plays are gonna be Brain Control Heavy and MST. These are just like, kind of staple cards you see these in most of the decks in the format brain control this is a damage based deck right this is a very aggressive deck brain control helps it to fulfill its goal of beating your opponent really really quickly and sometimes you just steal games because this deck already puts out a lot of damage so if you go summon a guy special summon two more guys activate brain control you can immediately win the game out of nowhere even if your opponent's at like six thousand life points uh, and then heavy storm and mst are just your basic trap spell and trap card removal these cards cleared the way for things like black whirlwind to resolve so if you're worried about bottomless trap hole or deep prison or whatever you can use these cards to get rid of your opponent's back row and then safely stick your black wing monster with whirlwind and seal the game uh also mst is extremely good in a mirror match because in the mirror match if someone sticks a whirlwind and the other person doesn't have it it's probably going to go the way of the person who has the whirlwind who that actually stuck on the field so mst stops whirlwind which is incredibly important i also want to now get into the traps we already touched on icarus attack a bit but this is also like one of the reasons to play this deck yes. right i know there have been rare instances where some people have opted to play blackwing without this card but i think if you're looking at all the reasons to play the deck you know all the powerful synchros it can access blizzard being one of the only like one card raw synchros in the entire format black whirlwind with how much advantage the card can generate on its own if uncontested. I think this is also another reason, right? Icarus Attack uh, being net on like on paper a two for two, but uh, most of the times if your opponent isn't playing around it, it can be a three for two actually because they yes. might try to, tr you can throw in your monsters into like an opposing deep prison or mirror force and they're going to lose that card in addition to two other cards. Um, but at the higher skill levels, you'll see a lot of people might just play like one monster, but other times you actually can't play around this card. This is a very interesting card in the format because uh, it, it creates a really interesting dynamic anytime the Blackwing uh, deck is in a match. You want to go into uh, more depth about this? Yeah, so Catch-22. It definitely is a Catch-22 card because, like you said, most players want to play around Icarus Attack naturally. The second you see a Shora or a Bora uh, or a Kalut or anything like that, you know you're playing against Blackwings because those cards are specific to Blackwings. Uh, there's another deck, Value Turbo, that does play Soroko and Value, but it doesn't play any of the other guys. Well, Gale as well, but it doesn't play any of the other guys. So the second you uh, you verify that the deck you're against is Black Wings, your mind should shift to, okay, his back row, if he has any, is probably Icarus Attack. You should just always assume it and try to do your best to play around it. But the strength of Black Wings, the Catch-22 part of it is, if you just put one card on a field, that is an ideal situation for Black Wings either way. Black Wings love you just having one monster and no back row or just one back row and no monsters. Though both of those things are great because if you have no if you have no monsters, that means they have a clear shot to your life points, right? And if you have just a monster, they have a clear shot to your life points. <laughs> they can trample <laughs> over you no matter what. The attack mode or defense mode doesn't matter. It makes it easier to stick whirlwind. And so all of this is because you're trying to play with Icarus. So even if you have traps and monsters, you're like, hmm, I don't want to really commit a monster and a trap turn one because I might get Icarus. So you try to just play around it and then you get put in this weird situation where, oh, man he has a shoro on the field well if i try to attack over his shoro with my monster like let's say you have a thunder king or a flamvel fire dog or something and you try to attack over their shoro that, those monsters technically do beat shoro in battle and you can't tell kalut the moon shadow could be in your opponent's hand and it's at three so it's actually a card that they probably have uh, around, I think, 40% chance to open with in six cards. So it's a really high chance, almost a coin flip, that they have Kalut on turn one, which is really scary. And this is not including if they, you know, play the Lord of Darkness and stuff like that and increase those odds. So playing just one card per turn to play on Icarus actually plays into the Blackwing game plan. Playing two cards on the field also plays into the black wing game plan it's one of the reasons why i think that this deck has a good matchup against combo -y decks so any deck that needs two cards to play uh black wings naturally kind of pick it apart because icarus is so so good against decks that need to play two cards so decks like that are zombies uh quick draw things like that they, they want to put two cards on the field to do any play and icarus just 
automatically debilitates those decks so yeah this card is insane and like you said you want to try to chain it to your opponent's removal so if you summon your shora and they have a uh, bottomless trap hole you want to icarus and then pop their other two cards that way you get three of their cards for two of yours and this is just good card economy and once you start doing stuff like that you'll be in good shape to just play the deck at a high level i feel like that's like the beginning is learning how to use your icarus attack properly one of the things that i like to do when i'm playing black wings is um i typically hold icarus attack and wait for my opponent to establish a field as opposed to putting icarus attack down turn one when you don't know how they're going to play because if you set any of your traps right they're going to just assume it's icarus attack anyway and they'll in the beginning of the game when people have their most amount of cards they will play around it to the best of their abilities but it gets to a point where at some point you just have to commit they just have to commit at some point and everyone knows that feeling was like oh man i hope he just doesn't have a good attack because my life points are getting <laughs> kind of low and i have to put something on the field to defend myself so they finally commit and this is where the icarus attacks come to just take everything and clean up the game um so yeah this card is very very powerful and it does it is like quintessential edison format to know how to play around this card and to play with this card if you're playing black wings precisely and that's one of the reasons why i wanted to start with black wings for the edison encyclopedia because i feel like that is what even if you're going up against an opponent and you do not know what they are playing if they set a back row it's like blackjack it's a 10 it's an icarus attack just assume <laughs> yeah. it's going to be an icarus attack at the very least and yes. try to go from there <laughs> and honestly if it's not you're happy with that you're like all right it was just exactly yeah exactly it's a win-win it's a win-win yep. so i think that's probably all i wanted to discuss with the main deck unless you felt like there was anything important to discuss in the trap section i mean there's a lot of generic stuff in here i mean there's yeah, some interesting no. stuff with like legacy and oppression but i think it's not necessarily specific to blackwing unless you want to elaborate on anything yeah the only thing i'll say is that legacy has seen popularity last year um it's a card that not every blackwing deck has to play but what it does do for the deck is it allows it to safely set multiple back row and kind of have built-in protection without playing a card like starlight road because starlight road sure. is very hit or miss whereas legacy yada can help you to see black whirlwind uh, more safely it also plays into cards like uh, opposing dust tornadoes opposing icarus attacks mst heavy storm you can chain it and it'll draw you a card so if you set this if you set your yada garasu legacy yada and you also set something like deep prison your opponent might be like hmm two back rows i can heavy storm and if they heavy storm you chain legacy of yada and you'll draw a card which means your opponent used their heavy storm expecting to get two of your cards but they actually only got one because legacy yada garasu replaced itself on a surface it's like a very basic card that just draws a card but then it just happens to do this specific thing that black wings kind of wants to do which is trade favorably so we already talked about doing it with icarus attack well doing it with legacy yada is also another way your opponent might blind mst and if you have legacy yada garasu set you chain it and you draw a card now they actually went minus one because they intended to destroy your back row and go one for one but then you replace the card and drew a card so now uh your opponent went minus one so legacy is just like a card that you don't always see so i just kind of wanted to talk about that one a little bit um, sure. but it is becoming more popular but yeah we can move i on think it's the i think it's also important to mention too when you're talking about the heavy storm and the legacy and dimensional prison example as well even though it ends up being it breaks even in terms of card economy because your legacy is replacing itself i think it actually is more shifted in your favor because you got the heavy storm out of their hand yes, and that huge. you now know that you don't have to deal with that for the rest of the game and Correct. so yes on the surface yes in a vacuum it's a one for one but getting heavy out of the rest of the game knowing that your war winds get not fully resolved you know they're still mst dust tornado right. post side and such but i think that's also just that's you know being able to like one up your opponent that way that's there's a lot of mind games with legacy of yada garasu and Con that's conveniently has a, has, has a wing beast on the card too so you know that, that, <laughs> that counts is for, funny, for flavor right? for flavor yeah. um i think I'll, i wanted to talk about just quickly the extra deck you're already mentioning some of the powerful synchros that are in edison format naturally but this deck obviously gets to play stuff like arm wing armor master uh silver wind as well i think we can just touch on these three before we uh really get into some of the action which some of the people are looking forward to yes so let's talk about the first one black wing arm wing this guy has an entire deck dedicated to basically just him but in black wings he's also very unhinged so when i was talking about blizzard making level six synchros immediately and two of the best ones being goya guardian and Brionic, the other one that it can go into and that you will go into very often is arm wing so arm wing looks like a normal monster just like bora does it just has you know 2300 attack six stars dark wing beast all those things right but then it happens to trample and when it does piercing which trample piercing those words are interchangeable if you ever played uh magic the gathering but <laughs> when it when it does piercing damage gains 500 attack which means it goes up to 2800 attack so if you're attacking a face down and you suspect that it might be treeborn frog or Ryko, both of those monsters have a hundred defense which means that this guy does 2700 damage to your opponent's life points through a defense mode monster this card is a win condition so arm wing is literally a win condition against very 
common defense mode monsters. People often bring back their tree worm frogs, even if they don't necessarily have something to do with it. Um, they'll just bring it back just for like, oh, I want to kind of block a monster. And if they do that against black wings, uh, they open themselves up to a lot of different things, Shora, Bora, but arm wing being one of the most deadly because arm wing is just 2800 trample, 2800 piercing. Uh, so he's really, really good. The other thing that you summon him for is that he's a dark monster that is over 2000 attack for again deck devastation virus so if your opponent ever randomly summons arm wing and sets a back row and you kind of don't have any reason why they need to be doing that you your ear should go up and you should be expecting that something like a deck devi might be in the back row if not icarus attack because you should always be thinking icarus attack but also just add after game one and two deck devastation virus to that mix but yeah arm wing is one of the quintessential black wing synchros you can also use it with things like Kalut because it is a black wing uh so there's that it goes with 3700 beats any monster in the format at that point and can go for random game shots uh next we have armor master before we go to armor oh, master oh, I, I also do just want to mention that i think especially in edison format just sticking a 2300 guy it sticks to the board is just good in general yes. i think like modern Yu-Gi-Oh might convince people or like people might be conditioned to believe that oh if i just have like a guy on the field that just has a big number that doesn't really matter all that much by modern Yu-Gi-Oh standards right. but in this format exactly just having big things on the field is actually like an enormous amount of pressure more so than you might expect a lot of the times just because like you mentioned at the beginning of this video it's it's difficult for a lot of decks to like put more than one monster on the field and sometimes even just getting a couple monsters on the field and so just having a big threat that can pressure your opponent's field it puts them in an awkward position just in terms of tempo that you have big thing they don't now unfortunately it's slightly under that 2400 threshold for monarchs and such yep. but Kalut sort of helps circumvent that because then it becomes <laughs> 37 yeah. but you know we, we can't have it all right you know black wings <laughs> yeah. have to be balanced in some capacity oh, anyway yeah, armor balance. master <laughs> yeah <laughs> so let's move on to armor master so armor master is the seven star synchro 2500 attack which is a very good attack line because this guy crashes with things like stardust dragon and absolute zero which is a uh, very common extra deck fusion monster played by multiple decks in a format so absolute zero has 2500 attack usually and so does stardust dragon and so does mocking of fortress so all these guys have 2500 attack and this is relevant because armor master happens to not be able to be destroyed by battle so that's his first line of text cannot be destroyed by battle what this means is that you can crash with a Stardust and the Stardust will die and the Armor Master will live. That is extremely important. Um, because it can't die by battle, this is also a good wall against decks like Dragon Turbo uh, because that deck is extremely aggressive. It usually tries to end the game in one turn. And so you summon Armor Master, it can't be destroyed by battle, which most of their monsters just beat things in battle. The other thing is that and this is really cool, you don't even take battle damage from battles involving this card. So even if their guy happens to be 10,000 attack and they attack over your armor master, it doesn't matter. I take no damage and I'm still looking at you. Five-headed dragon does nothing to this guy. Uh, so that's a really, <laughs> really good thing. And then it has this other effect, which you don't typically see come up, but it could. Um, so after he attacks a monster, you can put a wedge counter on it. On the following turn, you can remove a wedge counter to make that monster's attack and defense go to zero until the end of the turn. So it is a relevant effect and you definitely should not forget it it just doesn't come up that often because typically when people are summoning armor master is usually to get darks in a graveyard for something like dark armed or to wall up in a mirror match or wall up against things like dragon turbo or just because you need something that's 2500 and that's that line i mentioned why it's good for crashing but it's also good for beating over monarchs they are the most common um, tribute monsters in the format this pretty much you see caius in every game you play almost and so yeah beating over caius is a big deal beating over other monarchs and things like that is a big deal so armor master happens to do that uh and like we always say, this monster could also be backed by Kalut, which brings him to 3,900 attack, beats everything in the format. Uh, so yeah, and then what I wanted to say also while we're here, so there's one more Silver One the Ascendant. Now, I very rarely see this guy summoned correctly. Uh, <laughs> and so we'll talk about value in a, in a second with these guys, but this guy requires a Blackwing tuner and two or more non-tuner monsters. So you need three monsters to make it, which is why typically Blackwing players don't go for it. It's really, really difficult to make it. In fact, I think this being a eight star, the only way you can really make it is with Blizzard and double Kalut in the build like this, right? If I'm not mistaken, I don't think you can 
bring this out in any other way. So it's really, really difficult to make, but it does have a really good effect. So when it is synchro summoned, you could target up to two face up monsters on the field with defense lower than this card's attack and destroy those targets. And then you cannot conduct your battle phase this turn. Um, and then it says during each of your opponent's turns, the first black wing monster you control that will be destroyed by battle is not destroyed. So two very, very, very good effects. It's just that summoning him is a bit difficult. Typically, if you have Blizzard and two level three monsters on the field, you can probably do other things to deal with your opponent's cards. But I have seen situations where summoning this guy specifically is a blowout. Uh, so yeah. just keep that in the back of your mind. I guess you could also go like Shura, special summon Vayu, Kalut as yep, well. So that's a good Because way. that's eight. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's better than Blizzard Double Kalut. Yeah, I like it's, that It's still not super likely to happen. Correct. Uh, in it's any case, we're, we're summoning it with this little guy right exactly. here. Exactly. <laughs> so all of the synchros that are Black Wings, you can summon them, you kind of cheese them out with Vayu. So Vayu has an effect where you can banish it from the graveyard. So this guy is another monster that you do want in your graveyard. And when you banish it from your graveyard, you can banish another Black Wing monster that is not a tuner. And you can summon a monster from your extra deck with a level that is equivalent to the monsters you banish. So in the case of Armwing, if you banish a Vayu and a Sirocco from your graveyard, you can summon a six star because those levels equal six together. Um, and then if you banish a Armwing from your graveyard and a Vayu, you can summon an Armor Master. So this means that when your Armor, when your Armwing gets killed, right, it gets destroyed in battle or destroyed by your own Icarus attack or you tribute it for Icarus attack or whatever, uh, and you have it in a grave, you can get your Vayu in grave and then banish both, bring out Armor Master and it kind of progresses. So then if you have multiple value in a grave you have like this little engine where you're playing from your graveyard and again there's an entire deck based on just doing this because this is a yep. very powerful interaction it means that your cards get value even after they hit the graveyard and that's a very important thing in Yu-Gi-Oh. so you want to do things like oh if i have value plus icarus attack this is a great way to use icarus attack because even though it's, it's using two of your cards to get rid of two of your opponent's cards Vayu will eventually become a real card from the graveyard. And that, at that point, it's a plus one. So yeah. doing getting rid of two of your opponent's cards and getting rid of two of your cards, you guys are even. But then when you activate Vayu's effect from the grave to summon a guy from your extra deck, you're at plus one. So Vayu is extremely powerful in this format. Then if you have Armor Master in your graveyard, uh, and value you can summon silver the ascendant the 2800 guy so typically this is the main way that you see this guy come out um he's the biggest one and yeah he's just he's just big he crashes with dark arm he beats over dark arm with Kalut. yeah he's just big so usually when he comes out uh the good thing is that at least you know once you deal with the silver wind your opponent can't use him with value because there's no black wing level nine synchro in edison format um so you can rest assured there but uh, he is really, really strong, and he beats pretty much every monster that people typically summon. So, like, most of the Synchros get beat by him, uh, and most of the Monarchs and stuff like that, they all just get beat by him. Yeah, I think one really sick play, it doesn't come up too often, but it can, is if you already have uh, Shura plus Gale, you can Shura, let's say you hit something, you get the Vayu out, then you sink the Shura and the Gale for an Armor Master, and then you sink the negated Vayu and the Armor Master for a Stardust, and then because you have Armor Master Vayu, you could banish those of those for Silver Wind. So now you have a 2800 backed by a stardust that protects you from destruction and it's also a 2500 beater on top of that so yeah uh, very strong there's play. just you know, there's just some really insane things that this deck is capable of doing so all right i think that's going to cover it for our entire deck overview this is probably the most in-depth blackwing deck profile ever which is going to put everyone to sleep but i think we're going to go ahead now we're going to jump into some edison rated and uh, let's Ooh. see how this deck does and we're going to hear from the mind himself how blackwing is supposed to be played Yes, this should be really fun. I, I love playing this deck because it's reliable. And I say that now, you better not curse me dueling book with your algorithm, but <laughs> Black Wings is a very reliable deck. It's okay. You're with me and you have the pro tag power, so it's fine. What okay. do you want to do for rock, paper, scissors? What do you want? Are you showing me right. roll a die? I'll roll a die every time. So one and two. You're on team roll a die. Yes. All right. Yes. So I rolled a five for scissors. Yep. And we roll and just, okay. Well, all right. we, <laughs> we're going we can't second, win them all. Look, we can't win them all. It's fine. It's fine. Going it's second fine. with this deck isn't it's the worst. Fine. All right. Good luck. Have fun. Return to courtesy. Let's see how our opponent's going to play out. Okay. okay, all right. This is a fine hand. It'll it would be better, better going but... first. Yeah. <laughs> we do have the dust shoot, so hopefully they don't commit too many cards. Okay, just one. A right. back row. All right. T-sets, this, this very good. common in Edison. This is yeah. very good. And that's so, that's fine as well. Yep, so we have uh, a lot of things that we could do here. So we do yeah, have Icarus so Attack. talk it out. Yep. What are you thinking? So we have Icarus Attack, which means that... Um, we have the ability to get rid of both of their cards if we need it to. We also have Trap Dust Shoot, and they do have four cards they're going to draw to five. So our Dust Shoot is basically guaranteed to resolve. How do you feel about summoning your 
Soroko and attacking his face down monster. Oh, this is you. I'm the I'm the arms. I, oh, okay. I wanna, oh, we're okay. hearing from the master here. Okay, all right. Well then, yeah, I'm gonna summon Soroko and attack. So let's see what sure. happens. Let's see if the summon goes through. He said, I'm the arms. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> not the arms. All right. So if they let it, I don't know if they thumbs it up. All right. Well, yeah, we're going to get in. Hopefully it's not hamster. That would be a disaster. Oh, it's Set honest. honest. Okay. okay. That's interesting. interesting. So here's one of the reasons why black wings are strong. There is no other <laughs> monster that you could normal summon in a format that would literally be an honest turn one. Okay. Now we are safe to set dust shoot and Icarus attack if we wanted to. And I think that that's exactly what I want to do. All right, we'll set those two. Yep. We're gonna flip this dust shoot immediately. It, yes, immediate. Okay. Let's see what he has. Hopefully, that's not okay. Ooh, they have. Ooh, they have interesting. Gale. Yeah, this is very interesting. So they have Gale okay. and Cyber Dragon, and they have Gores. So their hand is pretty good. Wow, they have so many ways to deal with our setup. So yeah, let's get the let's get this written down. I got you. You you do your thing. Yep. So I think that I want to put away the Gale. Okay. Be, and the reason is what you're thinking. I, yeah, I don't want them to have my Sirocco. I want them to summon Cyber Dragon and try to attack the Sirocco. And we do have a Kalute to back up our guy. And then we have an in-phase Icarus attack as well. So sure. I do not want my monster being halved. I also don't want them going for something like Stardust Dragon with the Cyber Dragon. So Gale's gone. Right, go Gores. And we know about Cyber. Gores. Yep. So. yep. So we just have to be careful about how we navigate touching their life points. Okay, they're going to set, set. So only in-phase uh let's see that most likely is Ryko set and that other card is solemn judgment yes so it actually has to be they can't set cyber dragon yep. it's not soroko i want to icarus and pop the Ryko for sure and i think i think i want to also pop the um put the thinking face on let me think about this because I don't want to, I kind of want them to have the Solemn only because they have Gores. Okay. So like that kind of hurts them to have that. So yeah, let's pop the one that's not Solemn Judgment. We'll leave them with Solemn Judgment. This might be a little unhinged. I can understand it though, because if they already have Judgment, it puts that, ooh. Oh, how come they Interesting. Didn't? I okay. don't wonder why they didn't flip. Maybe they were trying to get value out of it. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Well, we're there's, there's always an argument for that. Okay. So now they have Cyber Dragon, uh, uh, Ryko is gone. So they have Cyber Dragon, Gore, Solemn Judgment. Those are their three cards. Yep. All right. At this point, I'm actually okay to summon the Kalut and attack them and see what happens. I don't think they're going to Solemn this, but let's see if they do. Because we're in a fine position now, because even if they special side draw, we have multiple ways to deal yes. with it. Yes. So I want to set Deep Prison and Bottomless Trap Hole and pass. See what happens. So one unknown. So they're probably they have only summer. one actual play that we can think of. Yes. And we're okay with them using Solemn Judgment as long as it's not like to push through anything crazy. Okay, bottomless this. Yep. Let's see if they're going to Judgment. They per are. Perfect. That's exactly, That's exactly what we, we wanted. wanted. Yes. Now, hopefully Dueling Book didn't give them the Gale again. Okay, it did not. <laughs> <laughs> you and your conspiracy theory with Dueling Book. <laughs> <laughs> Although oh. I've played enough prog with Gage. I've, I've had it happen to us a fair share yeah. of times as well. So, Oh, perfect. Activate Deep Prison, right. of course. And yeah. then now perfect. we're in a very simplified game state. They have Gores in hand and they have a back row for some reason that they just set. So we're in a really good spot. Uh, I would just attack for 14 right here. Just get in with that. Yep. See if we can connect. We're going to get next leveled with Gores. Doesn't look like it. All right. And then set the Book of Moon. Um, I think we could hold the value in our hand. I don't think we need to have it on the field yet. Yeah. We could have got aggressive last turn, but I don't want to overtly play into Mirror Force or Torrential right now when we know that they have Gores in hand. I don't think there's any reason to either. Exactly. So just attack again. I think that that's totally fine. Yeah. They're going to have to start doing something. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So the card in hand is okay. still just Gores. So now we can yep. set Solemn. Uh, and yeah, we're good to go. I will admit, when we saw Honest after the Sirocco connected, I was not expecting this to be the... Uh, each card we see of this deck, I was not expecting this the direction Same. to be. This was going to go. <laughs> this is like a pile at this point. I'm not really is sure. Is this like chaos is. good stuff? But Honest, uh, I don't know. Okay, yeah, yeah. they're just passing. All right, this is that's, great. That's sick. Yeah. Uh, really good draw. So the only thing that might make us have some caution is if that back row is, in fact, Torrential or Mirror Force, we would have to Solemn mm -hmm. it. Uh, but we do have Shura Food, as I call it right there. Uh, but I think... It's not Shura Food because Battle Feeder would get ex banished. Exactly. So yes. because Battle Feeder would get banished, Shura can't get its effect, which means that if we wanted to commit, we actually have a safe way of doing it. Can I see our graveyard? We should have a Soroko, right? We do. Perfect. So we can actually summon Vayu. And see what they do. Okay. Uh, looks like nothing's happening. So we will just go into battle phase. Attack lowest to highest. 
Okay. And, and even if we got torrential here, that'd be actually okay, because then we can just bring out Armed Wing. And yeah, we can pass. Yeah, so this is where the Catch-22 happens. If if he did torrential us, we just won the game on the spot. Assuming that there's not another Battle Fader in the head. <laughs> now, I will say- Which, which we, given this deck, anything's possible. Anything is possible. Anything's game. Now, I will say, we could have played this game a lot more aggressive, of course, right? Like, we, we could have gone in uh, turns earlier with the value. We have had it for a couple turns now, um, and we could have gotten more aggressive. But I think that the way we're playing is making it where we can't lose the game. Uh, as opposed to trying to cram and win the game, it, it it puts us in a similar situation. We're also in such an advantageous position. I mean, we're we're way up on life. I yes. mean, our cards are just naturally a lot better than our opponents, just because black wing cards are just unfair that way. Yeah. So there, there's already a lot of things that are going for us. Yeah, are quite well. And we had the benefit of knowing their exact hand, so we were able to play them like a fiddle with the whole bottom right. list and deep prison and stuff. And I mean, attack. trap does shoot does trivialize a lot of games sometimes, it, unfortunately. It really but does. <laughs> <laughs> playing with open information in a format that is relatively simple compared to something like modern Yu-Gi-Oh, I would say. And, um, I, and I think but, Edison is um, a really big information war. I was going to say the difference is with Edison, because the games can't end immediately, uh, there are several turns that can go by where the trap does show. Oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. So they have their life points, which isn't much of a cost. Uh, so where are we going with this? Uh, we know they have gores. And yeah. So what are, hmm. we, yeah, put the thinking face on real quick. I just want to, yeah. we have Book of Moon and Solemn. So I'm okay with just letting this go, to be honest. I want to see what our opponent is trying to do so we get more information for games two and three, potentially. I don't think we're at risk of losing the game from this, so I just want to see where this is going. Because these guys get banished on the end phase. So, okay. They're, they okay. might be going for a uh, Black Rose Dragon. So, thinking face again. Um, We have judgment, though, if they have Black Rose. And we know one card <laughs> in hand is Gore, so they only have one card left. And right. they committed to their normal on the plague. We could book a moon. Let me see their graveyard one more time. I just want to check one sure. thing. I want to see their, let me see their graveyard real quick. I just want to check sure. if they have light and dark. Okay. So they don't they have, don't. They so don't have we dark. could book the plague. Yeah. Let's book the plague. Let's just book the plague. And now they have to find a way to do something else with this Sidra and battle fader. Otherwise they just lose them. Yep. And they'll probably attack over Kalut, which is fine. And I think this is such a, a, a textbook, uh, no pun intended. I did not mean to say that, but a <laughs> textbook <laughs> use of book of moon. <laughs> Uh, where oh, wow. it can just be, where it has so much flexibility being offensive and defensive. Like being, there's not many cards in the format that can just stop synchro summons like that. And yeah. that is one of them. Okay, so our opponent is playing machines somewhat because they are maining Cyber Dragon. Mm -hmm. That automatically makes me want to put in my Cyber Dragons. So I would side in both Cyber Dragons. Uh, I would also side in deck devastation viruses. I'll put those in. A lot of tiny guys. Uh, I would take out the Book of Moons. I don't think we're going to need them in this matchup. So they are playing things like Gale. Did see Plague, so there's an argument for Crow. Oh, yeah, they did play Potentially. Plague. Potentially. Yeah, I still don't know exactly what they're on yet. It did look like, like you said, I have an inkling that is some kind of um, chaos deck. Like or chaos something. pile. Yeah. yeah. Let's take out an Icarus attack. I feel like it somewhat does conflict a little bit with how many uh, we're putting in double deck Debbie here. How about Dushu going second? Uh, Dushu going second always. That's a good catch. Yep. Let's take that out. So swap those and let me look at this real quick. Okay. Uh, in terms of Solemn Judgment, I want to take that out for Dustrado. And do I want to put in another Dust? Let me just think real quick. Look at this. I think let's take out... No. Let's, let's, let's leave it like this. Let's leave it like this. Let's see what happens. Run it? Yeah, let's okay. run it. Imagine we're going to be going second here. I'd yeah, we're going to be going otherwise. second again. <laughs> I'm waiting for 2024 to be the year that someone comes up with a going second deck in Edison. <laughs> Every time people try to start this format, one of the first things I tell them when they get the bright idea, because people always do, to yep. make something go second. I'm like, honestly, there's really no incentive in Edison happen. format. Yeah. Like, I did the work for you, and it's just not a thing, unfortunately. Very okay. aggressive hand we have here. Yes, this is a this is an aggressive hand, and it's also a good hand. So we have a lot of ways we can go about this. We could just summon Vayu and poke their face-down monster. We know that they play Raikos. We know we they also, play Raiko. We also know that they like to set things like uh, Honest turn one. Um, but I, if it is Raiko, I would like to just attack it with Vayu. So let's start off with Vayu and normal summon it, and then just attack the face-down. Let's see what it is. Hopefully, we I always like this application of Vayu just to essentially just blank the Raiko so that your other threats can get through. It's Sangan. Oh, wow. They really are just on the chaos pile, aren't they? Yeah. Interesting. Sangan. Okay, so what are they going to search? DD War Lady is a good one. We saw several targets last game. Yeah. And we're going to We, set we saw Raiko, Plague, Honest. I was going to say Honest, but yeah. I thought you were going to laugh at me when I said that. But. No, no. Honest okay. is good. Uh, that, uh, yep, yeah, set both. All right. So we're in a spot. 
We do have Icarus to deal with whatever they decide to do. They might just summon Honest and attack. And I'm okay with Icarus and attack. I'm okay honest. with Icarus and Honest. Yeah. Ooh. Type chain and then uh, chain Icarus to this. I hope this is not yep. Starlight Road. Yep. So chain this is important because uh, this will make the D-Alchemist timing. Yes. We haven't gotten to the uh, fairy episode yet, but... Uh... <laughs> yeah, fairies is very technical, but that guy cannot activate because we chained it. So, all right. I think they... Hopefully they understand. Oh, he said, I know. Okay. All right. So yeah, we destroyed it as chain like two, which means that it will not get to use this effect, which is really, really yes. good. Because it is a when you can effect, yep. uh, which is <laughs> a classic old school Yu-Gi-Oh problem. Another interesting right. thing is that, uh, so Honest is in the banished pile and we know that there's one in a hand. So that's, and it's at two in this format. Right. So that's both Honest accounted for. So here we want to shuffle our hand real quick. And then I would like to uh, normal summon out this Bora because now we have a D prison. All right, let's try to get it. Like we're pretty good. Our opponent's pretty responsive. I feel like they would have flipped something. Yeah, that's true. And then we could just set the D prison and pass. Dust on the end phase. They're blinding. It. Oh my God! If they hit the Yada, we're chained. Oh, oh my God! Wow, the value. Uh, oh my God! So this is this is textbook. What you want to do? You want to be getting your plus ones this way. Your opponent just went minus one by doing that. And that not to so mention, good. our D prison is also protected. Yes. shrouded in a sort of weird way because mm -hmm. of that. So. Now, Legacy is also one of those cards that forces your opponent to play differently once they know that you're on it. Because then yeah. they're like hesitant because they're like, ooh, what if I hit it? It's yada. You know, I'm going to lose the card economy. So <laughs> that's what I love about it. I love that what you yeah. just said. The whole like catch 22 making you not want to. Uh... Okay. Uh, oh, okay. That's we're really just sending good. chaos orc. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And that's a good monster. We do have cyber dragon to deal with that. Um, the only awkward thing is that they also play cyber dragon. So we might be getting contacted on just to deal with this. But if we draw a gale or if we draw Kalut, we're in good shape. The nice thing is we do have the D prison to deal with this D elk. Yeah, it just it's just chaos pile from the looks of it here. Yeah, which is actually We're gonna D prison this. Yeah, I think I want to D prison it. I just don't want them getting any value. We can deal with the sork. Yeah, they also have honest, so like we can't beat that guy in battle anyway. That too. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is perfect, this and they free. left it up. So yeah, let's just uh, special our uh, cyber dragon, and I'm debating if I want to go any harder than we're already going like do i want to get in for 17 they do play things like battle fader even they, if they have gores we have icarus to deal with it so yeah the only thing that's tricky is that they could also have uh caius so if we attack in the battle fader they all just have one card on the field this is me this is where like the crazy fraser mind comes in i start no, thinking that's... about so we have the cyber dragon which already clears this threat and then we have icarus attack which clears an established threat and a future turn i just want to attack over this and then just see okay. where it goes We'll take it slow. And then do I even want to set my back row here? Um, I think I'm good to just pass as is. This is a little risky, okay. but let's see what happens. If they have cards. I understand trooper, why you don't yeah. want to though. Because the Icarus attack, I want to use it as, and I mentioned this earlier, but I want to use it as a way to deal with an established board, which they do not have right now. We know that one card in their hand is honest as well. Yep. So yeah, it's a that chance doesn't that do that too much just, for us. Yeah, that doesn't do much. Okay, so shuffle a hand real quick just so we conceal that we're uh, all right, <laughs> same order. All right, uh, let's see. <laughs> so that monster could be anything. It could be the Honest. Um, it could also just be Raikou, which is a card that they play. I don't have a read on it one way or the other. I feel like they're just defending their life points. Setting Honest they and didn't, defending their life points is they not didn't, good. We know one card's Honest, and so there's two other cards in their hand that they chose not to play. Yeah. So do I want to commit this Shora now? Um, yeah, let's send it. Let's, let's summon Shora, see what okay. happens. We're up a game. We're yeah, up a game. exactly. We're up a game. Let's get in. Let's try to see if Shore can get some. Uh, if it's honest, I'm happy with that because then we just kill it for free with Cyber Dragon. Perfect. Raiko. This is yeah, also good. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. There goes their Sidra. Brain Con and, and Dushu both. I, I mean, love Dushu, this. Eh, yeah. 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 It's fine. This is. Uh, you going direct? Ooh, that's not the this question. Turn. Not this turn. <laughs> um, hold on. Main phase two. Uh, let's set Heavy Storm. Sure. And then pass like that. So they milled the Cyber Dragon. They were one turn away from drawing Cyber Dragon. They were. That was the next card. Setting again. Okay. Not liking these draws. Yeah, no. A lot of back row removal against a deck that doesn't appear to actually play too... Well, they do. I guess they just have They play some. Yeah, we're just not... I mean, that's it just like didn't all line the back up. row removal we have in the deck. Yeah. yeah, it just kind of didn't line up right. Okay. Uh, I don't want to commit the Bora because we're top decking almost when it comes to monsters, which means that if right. we draw like Whirlwind, I do want to have that as a backup. So let's just attack with Cyber Dragon. It's probably another Raikou. Okay. And we'll Fine. just deal. Spirit Reaper. Reaper. Interesting. That is interesting. Ooh, that sounds so scary. 
Yeah, because that means we could be seeing Kaius potentially. Well, yeah, we, and also any light monster allows them to beat over Cyber Dragon and Sweeper will get in. So mm -hmm. do I want to commit harder? They haven't looked. Can I see their graveyard real quick? I just want to see where Heavy Storm is not. Okay, Heavy Storm is not in the grave. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's kind of just like I don't want to go full tilt and commit my Bora and Icarus attack yet, but maybe I need to. You can always set both. Yeah, I could set it to conceal Just it. Just feign. Because, I mean, yeah. we're playing Black Wing, so I mean, I don't know. We're not really concealing a whole lot here at the end of the day. Right, that's true. So yeah, let's try to let's set both. Let's see what happens. You want to set? Okay. Yeah. Let's see what happens. I'm okay with them going for like MST in our hand with Experiper, but I really don't want the Icarus to go to waste. Um, just like rotting in our hand if they only punish. Like obviously, Heavy Storm is a is a punish, but not not too too bad. Only because they don't have back row. For some reason and we have right. another card to deal with back row i right was that just off the top uh that's this is fine they may have because, shuffled they may have shuffled yeah, it's fine yeah so we can chain icarus and um pop both of their cards so we lose like these guys but we get rid of his reaper which i really don't want to be there and now that's good because it keeps them off if they did have a caius yes uh, they're gonna need some other way to get a monster on the field and we know one of their cards is honest in hand so eventually <laughs> they're gonna set that honest yep <laughs> oh perfect and we just get bore back anyway all right uh, let's just attack. Let's go back to All the right. original game plan. Plague. Plague. Can I see their grave Interesting. real quick? Yes. One, two, three darks. <laughs> Ooh, that's uh, scary. That is. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm just going to pass. I'm not going to do anything. Uh, I feel like if Dark Arm is coming down, it's just, you well, know. Well, we, we know one card's on is, so it's got to be Dark Arm as the other card that they've had this whole time, or yeah. they just drew it. So, yeah. And it's fine. Like, up, oh, check in the grave. Okay, Plague. Oh, uh, what? Oh, they drew for turn and immediately did that? Yep. Okay. Interesting. Oh, they're oh going sinking for... with the honest. Okay, Goyo Guardian, I'm guessing. Goyo. Take our Sidro. Yep. So, okay. This is um can we draw like Kalut here? I was gonna say, like, this is bad, but you know, it's we're also we have some time. There are some really good top decks. There's another Icarus attack, two whirlwinds, there's Gale, there is uh And we okay. have the MST. Yep, yeah, we have the MST. Right. Let's get a whirlwind off the top. Oh, okay. that's that's also good too. Really good. That's good too. That's okay. good too. All right. All right. We're going to MST that back row. That we are. Judgment. Oh, wow. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that was really Descended. good. So yeah, um, summon special. Uh, let's see. So we have to deal with Goyo. We have to clear the Goyo. Yeah. Can I yeah. see your grave real quick? Okay. So there is a value in grave, which is good. So we do have like follow up. So this means that even if Cyber Dragon were to beat on every one of our monsters, we can em eventually summon an arm wing. So now let's just uh, beat over the Goyo Guardian because that guy is super problematic. As you said, the pump doesn't matter here. Both exactly. are the same. Yep. We're not going for piercing over Sidra. And whatever card they stacked, they're going to draw. So as long as that card is not specifically like Caius, we are pretty decent we're in a like pretty decent spot cyber dragon is a little problematic but we also can top deck so many cards like gale uh again top deck kaius oh no wow their top deck was that's Kaius. debilitating i that's actually crazy. said i hope that it's not that and it was exactly <laughs> that okay well we have no cards okay top deck mode yep now here's where our blizzard can just be insane show us why black wings are the best all right. Okay. All right. All right. There's still a chance. Wait, 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 wait. Don't play it. Don't play it. I'm just going to pass. I'm just going to pass. <laughs> just going to pass? Okay. Yep. That's fine. We're not in any danger of dying yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Our life points are really high. Our life points are really high. They might get aggressive. You don't want to gamble on camera for everyone? Ooh, gamble on camera? See, I'm gonna, <laughs> one thing about me, Simo, I'm going to count in real life, and gambling is not my thing. I like my math to be like 100%. I like things to be heavily skewed in my All favor. right. How do you like your math now? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> How do you like your math now is unhinged. Oh, God. Two, three, four, five, six of our darks are gone. Yeah. I mean, I think that we might have to gamble. So let's set both and let's gamble. It's the casino. It's the casino. You guys are getting it's okay. You it's okay. You're with me. You're fine. You're <laughs> fine. Okay. We're not fine. <laughs> oh, I heard so bad. But you know what? Okay, put those in a grave. I think so, we're probably dead here anyway. No, no, no. Yeah. You know, this is good. Put these in a grave, and this is fine. You know why? Because honestly, we were going to draw no monsters anyway. We're not. Any, we're closer to Blizzard than we were a second ago. This is all fine. This doesn't kill us. This is not enough to kill us. We get another turn. They do play Road. That's good information. That's very good information. See, this doesn't kill us. We get another turn. Another turn to draw Blizzard in his day. Oh, now they have back row. We'll see. Hey, <laughs> there he is. Okay. Now, now the blizzard has to connect. Oh, it does. <laughs> Let's thing. see. A solemn is gone now. Solemn's gone. Solemn's mm. gone. Okay. Um, bring up Shora, I guess. Yeah. 
Okay. We lose to like One, any real We trap. lose to everything. Like we have to go for it. Yep. We also lose to Return from a Different Dimension, but we literally cannot play around anything. So let's just synchro and make Goyo Guardian. This is literally our only play, unfortunately. Um, if we drew this- uh, uh, We could go Armed Wing, and then if Armed Wing doesn't get banished, we do have an Armor Master because we have Vayu. That's true. And I did do some consideration for that, um, but because we have to use the battle phase, and you know what? Hmm, let me think about this. What? What? Are, what the, I guess, what's the back row going to be? It needs to be, okay, so bottomless and One of their prison. bottomless is, they have one bottomless gone, so right. they could still have a second. If it's uh, They could force, still have deep prison. If it's Mirror Force, that plays into the... Right, that plays into us getting an Armor Master. So maybe the safe play is to just Well, go... Armed Wayne can't clear Caius, though. So right, I think we have to go Goyo. Right I think you're right. So, okay. so no, yeah, I, think it's, I think it's Goyo or Bust. All right, that's oh, fine. There we go. We're dead anyway. All right, admit defeat. Yep. Okay. Uh, Dush you back in. Yep, of course. Um, I don't want Dush Tornado now. I realize I don't need it, so we can swap those. Of course, we had the one in the deck, too. Yeah, and we drew it at like the worst possible time. But they also, <laughs> even though they are obviously playing traps, it's just I feel like our Icarus attacks deal with that naturally, and we have Icarus heavy yeah. and MST. So like, do I want Solemn back? So they're playing, they're playing Caius. Solemn is really good against Caius. Mm -hmm. So let's put Solemn back in. Let's get rid of um, hmm, bottomless trap hole against them. Just seems to be okay at best i'm thinking i know you're not a fan of bottomless i'm not and i'm debating right now i think i want to remove that bottom like a bottomless from the deck so let's swap these let me get a look they set monsters very often despise <laughs> cross, out. cross out i really really do <laughs> I really despise that card, but like it might be what we need right now. I don't know. Cross out might be better than just like a Nicker because they are playing. Um, we saw Starlight Road, so they're playing Starlight Road. We did. Mm -hmm. So I will take out a Nicker's attack. Let's go with. Oh God, I can't believe I'm doing this. I think I want to take out Nicker's attack and a Vayu, and then go with a uh, double cross out. Let's see. Going against everything he's ever known. I know this is like for me. This is like one of the hardest decisions to make. But like they said, only want one Icarus. Literally, yeah, I do want one Icarus. Um, okay. Because I, I just don't want to play blatantly in the like they're they're doing their Starlight thing, and we we do have deck W to just try to like end the game early. That's so true. let's just see what happens. We also haven't drawn Whirlwind yet. We have. We have Whirlwind. We're so due. We're due. Let, let's gonna run this. Yeah. Let's yeah. Let's run it. Let's see what happens. Okay. All right. Pro tag powers. Okay. Here we go. Here Double we go. Whirlwind Shura opening. That is not double war win shirt. That is definitely not. <laughs> All right. Um, we do have Solemn and we have uh, Bora. So hmm, how do I want to play this turn? So, I mean, our hand is just a bunch of the same stuff. So It is, unfortunately. A lot of redundancy. Yeah, a lot of redundancy. I want to say that this is a game where we're going to try to out damage them. So let's just go summon Bora and set Solemn and pass. And we, we could potentially like just rush them down. They do have Reaper. I was considering, oh, maybe we just pass, just fake the gores, but. Yeah, the Reaper is concerning. Reaper is scary. It is a one of. It is. This is the guy I did not want to see. We have Kalu, which is fine. Yeah. Whiff, please. That's a good yes. whiff. Yes, yes. That's a great whiff. Oh my God, that's a good whiff. Yeah, so damage. damage. All right, do they have their honest? They do okay. not. They do not. Okay. Wow. That gives us a lot of information as well. It does. So they don't have honest. Okay. I feel like you would honest there. A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. All right. They set two back row, knowing that we could potentially have. <laughs> We're you... in a position where cross out might be used, Frazier. We yes. might be there. <laughs> yes. Okay. I want to summon um, Bora. Mirror Force is gone. Just... And I'm willing to solemn it. a torrential. Okay. We are letting that go. That's fine. Yeah. We let that go. That's fine. Yeah. We have one already established. Let's attack with the one we have. All right, and yep, pass. So I need them to set a monster. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but it is yeah. what it is. Yeah. Our boar is still protected. And this is what I was talking about in the deck profile portion, right? Where it's like, even if you deal with the board, you still have to worry about the hand. Right. Set a monster, please. Okay. Ugh. That's still fine. All right. As, uh, <laughs> I think that, no, 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 no. Don't say Are we going to contact? Yeah, let's, let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. This is fine. Thumbs up that. Perfect. Oh, that's so good. Oh. oh. Oh, that's so good. Okay, what's the play? So we got Cyber Dragon, we got Whirlwind, we got Kalut. Cross out. We have Cross out. So the only thing that we, we have do, everything. Yes, we do have everything. So let's let's um special cyber. Have to. Play Whirlwind, summon Kalut, 
uh, declare effect. Go to an extra deck real quick. I want to see what you have in extra deck. I just want to make sure. So there is, okay, Chimera Tech's there. All right, let me see your graveyard real quick. Okay, so we have follow up and then let's search the deck. I think we're going to get Gale. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, let's get Gale. Okay, big, big turn. So we have so much. Um, <laughs> two so that's not game. So what are you thinking? I'm thinking less. Hmm. Yeah, let's cross out the face down monster. We're never going to use this card any other time. Yes. Oh, wow. It was Ryko. Oh, man. They lose all of them. They do. Let's see if we, did we get all three. We did. Okay, oh, so no nice. Ryko. In no hand. more Rikos. Okay. So now we're in this interesting situation where, like, we could contact and just swing. I kind of want to. Yeah, I'm. I, you know what? At first, I was like, oh, I want to make a level eight synchro. But I actually think, I actually think I would rather, less contact, less contact. Let's get this no contact? off the field. Yeah, okay. less contact. Okay, now the big question is, do I want to summon, do I want a special Gale here? And I'm thinking, Gale is like our only card, it's like our only real follow-up. I don't really care about Gores. This is 34, that wouldn't put us That's at game. That's about 26. So maybe we just swing lowest to highest here and see what happens. They took both. They took they both took it all. even declared an attack. Okay, go to main phase two. That and, tells me they don't have gores. Yeah, they don't have gores. Yeah, people shouldn't do that because there's a consideration that we would not even attack here with yeah. the um, 2000 guy. Okay, I think they were just safe to pass. This also means they don't have like battle fate or anything. Uh, so cards they could have that like would be annoying is brain control. Caius is always good, but we do have Gale. Gale's just great follow up. It is. I would have honestly, in hindsight, I would have gotten Blizzard if I realized that I wasn't going to summon a level eight, but in my head at first, uh -oh. okay, here's brain control. I think the Caius yeah. is coming too. Well, we can deal with that. We actually can. So they can Caius the whirlwind. Yeah. Didn't send it. Okay. Yeah, they might as well tribute it for Caius first. Oh no. Oh, oh, they no. just... Okay. Okay. Wasn't expecting that. No, I definitely was not expecting that. All right. Um, Let me see their grave one more time. So Mirror Force is banished, right? This is that game? Yes. So there's no... We know their set's not Raikou. Yeah, I know their set's... <laughs> That's so petty. So, we do know their set's not Raikou. Look at that. We've seen Sangen. We've seen Honest. We've seen Reaper. They're on 800 too. So they're going to set anything to not die. Correct. They are on the back foot and they don't have Mirror Force 1 million percent. So I think that mm -hmm. we should summon Gale because Gale will get a search of value. This also just threatens lethal if we can connect. Oh, they have it. They have the torrential. Crow okay. set. Okay. Right. That's set, fine. Set our oppression and pass. Okay. They they drew torrential. That was a good draw for them. And they're at the convenient perfect amount of life points. That, oh, that's bad. Oh my god. They are just top decking like a why I'm just gonna solo this. This is crazy. Oh my god. That was like worst case scenario just now. Oh, oh my god. Oh, that's actually okay. <laughs> Uh, we have Gale engrave, right? We have Gale, yeah. So we oh, just go okay. Blizzard, get summon, Gale, yeah, half. Summon, yeah, summon Blizzard, yeah. get, get Gale, fine. half it and a beat over. Yeah, okay, we're back in the driver's seat. Yeah, we're fine. We can't Whirlwind here because of Thunder King, unfortunately. Yeah, conveniently, our opponent top deck that, but uh, all is well. All right, and then we're just going to so Gale him. Uh, he's 950, so he takes some damage. Look at our opponent even using the, the attack increase and decrease. I love yes. opponents like this. Yeah. Uh, main two. Are we just sticking on this? Do you want to synchro because we have oppression? Make we a can't. big dude? Oh, it double tutors. Yeah. Duh. yeah. We're in a spot where if we draw any monster, we win the game. That's not mm -hmm. value, basically. Oh um, oppression, and that's game. GG's. Okay. Uh, let's see what we're going to draw. I just want to check the next draw phase. Sure. Okay, we were going to draw that, the best that, monster. We would have been, yeah, that's literally the best monster. Okay, so one of the yeah. things I like about what happened in that situation is that because we searched Gale, with Whirlwind, even though in hindsight, I'd rather have searched at Blizzard just to have that as follow-up, but it actually played out where having Gale Engrave randomly was like the perfect card to have in Grave <laughs> because yeah. it made all, it made, well, first of all, there's three Blizzards left in deck as opposed to two if we had searched one. So we had all three Blizzards left and it made it where our graveyard just deals with any big monster because Gale's just sitting in the graveyard. So yep. that weirdly worked out really, really well. Um, and then we were going to draw Sirocco anyway, so no matter what they drew this turn, they were going to lose the game here because Sirocco is a search for anything. Uh, yep. But yeah, this was a great display of Blackwing's power, and that was a that was a tough match because people do kind of notice because Keegan talks about it all the time, but D decks that play like D-Alk and Honest and things like that have a naturally decent matchup against Blackwing's because they're resilient yep. to like what it's trying to do, which is win in battle. If he had an Honest turn one, the whole game would have changed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but we were able to win because we just went for an aggressive... So we established a win condition turn one i looked at the hand 
double double bora double kalut so our game plan is really simple at that point we're just going for life points and that's what we kind of did we just yep. went in full beatdown mode and it, it kind of just worked out that way uh but yeah this deck you got to see whirlwind's power you also got to see just like what happens when uh, there is a value engraved and how safe that can be. And Gale. We kind of got to see a little bit of everything with this deck, I feel yeah. like. Yeah, like, Icarus Attack we, was really good. Yada, I thought that was amazing yeah. when we got the Yada off on a Dust Rando and we got to go plus one. So, yeah, mm -hmm. there was a lot of good interactions there. Uh, and, yeah, it was a little unfortunate game two, but we did get there in game three. So, yeah, Black Wings is just very, very resilient. Very strong deck. Very good top deck, too. I think that's understated. The top yeah. decks, I feel so comfortable top decking with this specific deck because you just mm -hmm. know so many of your cards that you draw off the top are unhinged i don't know yeah. what our dark count is but sometimes like you could draw a dark arm and it's just live randomly it's we are like, three exactly oh no yeah. no chimera Tech's the fourth sorry Never okay mind. yeah so if we so. if we had like a but blizzard, we were close we were yes, close a blizzard yeah. fixes this graveyard which is really mm -hmm. crazy uh, but yeah, this deck is just really, really scary off the top. It can draw so many cards that are insane. Even after opponent drew, I think their best possible top deck was Thunder King while we had Whirlwind. That had to yeah. be the best possible top deck. And we just drew a Blizzard, one of three. So not like crazy unlucky for them. It's just like we drew one of our three mm -hmm. cards that we play and it just trivialized the situation. We could have also easily had just drawn one of our three Sorokos and it would yeah. have also beat over to Thunder King. So I hope you guys enjoyed I this mean one. Yeah, absolutely. I think this was definitely a great first episode and just showcase of uh, why this is one of the most popular decks in the format. And like you said, I think a lot of the hands for this deck, not a lot of the hands, but I'd say a fair amount of them are uh, pretty straightforward in terms of what the game plan is. So yeah. in terms of like reduced complexity for someone trying to enter a format like this, this is just a really good entry point to just that way people don't have to run into as we, we had, you had some moments where you were really struggling, like uh, in this game, for instance, like with the yes. level eight synchro versus like the chimera tech play. Yeah. Um, there, there's a few points that we could take out and just say like oh we could have done something different here or there but like you said at the beginning of this game specifically you know we the plan was just beat down and at yep. the end of the day go face never fails in card games right? <laughs> yeah go face red deck wins like it's it's a very good strategy in this format as well um the red deck wins the black wing deck is one of the strongest because after you get your opponent's life points to a certain amount like when they're really low it's kind of a win condition because yep. all your top decks yep. could just be lethal. You can rely on your deck to just give you game. So that's kind of brain control is game. Blizzards are all game. Um, there's just so many cards that win the game outright. Once they're at like, you know, once he played brain control, he went to 800. I was like, all right, well now if we just touch you in any way, you yep. lose. Yep. Yep. So. Options just get even, even value has 800 attack. So <laughs> yeah, crazy. Value really even value. becomes lethal at that point. Yeah. Most importantly though, Frazier, Nobleman did not <laughs> fail you. It didn't. No, this is probably the, Simo, this is the most Nobleman has ever done for me ever. Every video I've ever done was Stango. And it's on camera. And yes. it's on camera. <laughs> yes. Every video I've ever done in my life, Nobleman has been the reason I lost or just the reason that I raged on film. And for once, it actually banished the best card it could banish, which is Raikou. And I got all of them, which against Black Wings, Raikou is kind of annoying. Like, sure, they take damage if you trample sure. it, but it does deal with Whirlwind. It deals with like oppression. It deals with a lot of your good cards. So I'm glad that yeah. we we didn't have to deal with Torrential this, or no, we didn't have to deal with Mirror Force or Raikou this game. And knowing that in the information war format is a big deal and it contributes to why Black Wings, once they know what you have or don't have in this case, you can just go in. Like, I know you don't have these cards now, and Black Wings is just a damage deck. So, oh, you don't have Mirror Force? Everybody in attack. So, guys, that is going to conclude the first episode of the Edison Encyclopedia being Black Wings. Uh, Fraser, thank you so much for spending the time. I hope you had a lot of fun. I'll have all your links down in the description so people can follow you and uh, follow all your podcasts and all your Edison information because that's part of the series. I want to make sure that other Edison creators get their time in the spotlight as well to uh, show off all the great content that they make as well. So, thank you guys all so much for watching. Be sure to like the video and subscribe as always, and we'll see you next time. Peace.